So yesterday we talked about two types of waves, longitudinal and transverse waves. Remember the difference between them. Remember that longitudinal waves, which are sometimes also called pressure waves, consisting of alternating compressions and rarefactions, and rarefaction is just a fancy word for area of low pressure. So a pressure wave is just an area of high pressure and an area of low pressure, alternating. <clears throat> Remember that the primary difference, though, is in the direction of travel and direction of displacement and how, they, and how those two directions relate. Transverse waves, which do not have to travel through a medium, tran displacement is perpendicular to the direction of travel. Now what does displacement mean when, you, when it's not an actual medium? We'll get into that next week when we talk about transverse waves. Longitudinal waves, the dire, the, it is in the direction of travel. The usual example for a longitudinal wave is a sound wave. But you can also think of a slinky that's stretched out and you're oscillating it on the long axis. This is another way of doing longitudinal waves. <coughs> Remember we talked about the wave speed as it relates to the wavelength and frequency. How it's the, mul the multiple of the wavelength and the frequency. So this will become important when we talk about wave speed in terms of bulk properties of matter for transverse waves or for longitudinal waves rather so getting into the bulk properties of matter we're going to get into three moduli the bulk modulus young's modulus and the shear modulus the bulk modulus is the way the way a material reacts to a direct pressure stress perpendicular to a surface. Young's modulus relates to how a surface reacts, how a material reacts rather, to a surface on to a stress on a, a thin rod or a thin wire. That's <clears throat> And a shear modulus refers to a, a material's reaction to a stress parallel to the surface. So if you think, for shear, if you think of a stack of papers, think of a stack of paper, like a ream of paper, and you push on the top, you push on the top, and some, you push down, but you push along the surface of the top of the ream of paper, you get that uh, you get you get where it kind of looks like this where it starts to do that that's shear the bulk modulus young's modulus shear modulus all the same units bulk modulus is denoted with capital b young's modulus is denoted with capital e shear modulus is is denoted with capital g Now, in each of these cases, it's the square root of the relevant modulus divided by the density. Uh, every, all of that's under the square root, as you can see on your notes, your note guide. So, for a tuning fork, which is, which is given on the note guide, your tuning fork, let's say my hand looks is the tuning fork, the tuning fork looks goes like this to generate its wave. So, what kind of what kind of wave would that be? Would that be direct compression? Would that be along a thin rod, or would that be shear? <coughs> so, think about that, and that will that will help you answer that question on the note guide. So the homework problem the homework problem is going to give you you're going to find the wavelength within in the tuning fork and the shear modulus of the tuning fork
that shouldn't be too terribly difficult. You've got all the information you need for that. Now, the speed of sound in air. Speed of sound in air, remember I mentioned yesterday, was 343 meters per second. Technically, that's just for 20, 20 degrees Celsius air, but you can use it as a good rule of thumb approximation for any, for any air at reasonable temperatures. And the reason it differs with temperature is because the density is going to differ with temperature in accordance with the, uh, the gas laws. So we're going to talk about loudness level as well. Loudness level and minimum hearing threshold. <clears throat> so your loudness level, and I've asked for this equation to get put up on the board, and I hope it is. The loudness level beta, which is measured in decibels, is 10 times the base 10 log of the ratio of the measured intensity to a reference intensity. Intensity is in watts per meter squared. It's in uh, power per area. And the reference intensity used for sound is the minimum hearing threshold, which is 10 to the minus 12 watts per meter squared, which refers to a which refers to an actual pressure differential of 2 times 10 to the minus 5 pascals. So 200 micropascals. <clears throat> now, decibels. Log decibels. The thing with decibels is it's a logarithmic scale. As, as should be obvious from the equation, it's it's a it's a logarithm, it's a ratio, it's the log of a ratio. So your decibels, import, some important figures you need to remember with decibels. Plus three decibels, you multiply by two. You multiply the intensity by two. Plus seven decibels, you multiply the intensity by five. Plus ten decibels, you multiply the intensity by ten. We use we use three decibels as doubling with. A, a lot in the military so that was that was one of those things that yes you're going to use it you're going to use it a lot seven decibels we didn't use that much because we didn't really do a lot of times five or divide by five uh, the rule of thumb we always used with signal intensities with line intent with line losses and specifically connection losses was any time we had to do a connection, it was minus three decibels. You had to cut the intensity in half. Well, so how do you do this? Well, when you, if I give you an intensity, you just divide it by the 10 to the minus 12 watts per meter squared, or you divide it by the pressure of two times 10 to the minus five pascals. You take the log of that you take the log base 10 of that, and then you multiply by 10. <clears throat> so I can give you an intensity and ask you to find decibel level, or I can give you a decibel level and ask you to find the intensity. So important thing, those are important things there. So on the homework, you have, <clears throat> on the homework, you've got three, three decibels, seven decibels, 29 decibels. Well, I shouldn't say on the homework, I should say on the note guide. On the note guide, you've got those decibel levels. So you wanna find the intensities, you wanna find the pressures, the pressure differentials for those. So that's the main, that's the main thrust of what I wanna to get to today. Um, <clears throat> don't forget your research paper outlines are due tomorrow no extensions past tomorrow and also don't forget your research papers are due on the 24th a week from last Monday this is to make sure that I have enough time to read them and grade them before the end of the quarter so everything should be good you should have if you have questions the sub has the if you have questions from the note guide, the sub has the answers to everything but the homework problem. Uh, the homework problem, it's an easy 10 points. So what I recommend you do on the 29 decibels, 
because 20 decibels is plus 10 and plus 10. So it's actually times, times 100, not times 20. So I would recommend on, on something like 29 decibels, you go 10, 20, 23, 26, 29. You do it as a five-step problem. <clears throat> no, not that kind of five-step problem. But you do, it, you do it in five steps. You do plus 10, plus 10, plus 3, plus 3, plus 3. So that's what I'm going to recommend. And good luck, with the, uh, good luck with the notes. If you've got questions, I am still an email away. I'm probably not going to be able to get to my email until, until the evening, but I am an email away. So I hope you enjoyed, and, and I will be getting a report from the sub, so don't go crazy. Don't be hanging off the ceiling or anything like that. You, you guys know how to behave. You guys know what to do. Um, quest, if you have questions, if you want to get some assistance on the research paper, send me an email. I will gladly help. So, and I will see you tomorrow. Thank you much.